I mean, I fell into kind of a despair that all my efforts are for nothing. And so I decided, well, what can I do? Well, you're faced with a choice. You either throw it all away and go be a stockbroker, try to make money and, you know, get that beautiful trophy wife, you know. Or you say, I'm going to do everything that I can myself to fight against this as hard as I can, even if it's just me drawing funny pictures. And through that process, I felt like I really became an artist. And the reason is because I'm actually not very happy with this book. And that's why I decided to do another one and recommit myself to even make it better than the first one. So in that respect, I did find a purpose that I didn't, I didn't think I had before. So yes. The other part is the question of equality. When you're when if you're born in this country or you grow up in this country, it's almost beaten into your head that this is a land of the free. There's equality. If you're not equal, there's if you're poor or some problem, whose fault is it? It's your fault. That's what they tell you. That's how you feel. And so I growing up in this country and I was indoctrinated with that. Pledge of Allegiance. Freedom, you have it. You have equality, go get it. Right? But that's what they said, but my life experience was telling me something different. At every turn, it was, oh, you're an Arab? Uh, you don't belong here. Get out of here. And so that's something that I think a lot of people have that experience. And at the end of the day, you have two choices. You either hide and conceal and be ashamed of who you are, right? Or you do the opposite of that and throw it in their face, right? I'm an Arab, and I don't care what you think about it. And I'm proud of who I am. And if you don't like it, that's your problem. It's not mine. And so from that respect, I feel like I do have found some kind of identity. But you know, it's an ongoing process. You never can ever say, this is what I am. And this is the way I'm going to be forever. So hopefully that answered some of you. Yeah. OK, I know, uh, I think I saw your hand. Go ahead. Okay, first, uh, the first graphic novel that I ever read was uh, Palestine by Joe Sacco. And I guess the, the question is, who, did you, do you have specific influences in the graphic novel genre? And then secondly, we know that there's a, you know, a rich tradition of cartoonists and caricaturists in the Arab world. Is there also a, a tradition of graphic novelists in the Arabic language in the Arab world that you might know about? Uh, yeah, okay, so the first part of your question is my influences. Now, I started out by reading superhero comic books, so I loved The Punisher, for example. And I still, even though he's basically a fascist character, he's still very, very interesting. Um, but yes, I was influenced by Joe Sacco, who, you know, was someone that I really admired. And there's another artist whose name is David Mazzuccelli. He's probably my favorite comic book artist. So I, uh, um, a very good book, if you want to go and read it, is called... Uh, Daredevil, oh, I forgot the title. It's a Daredevil collection. It's, uh, I forgot. If I think of it, I'll say it. But anyway, you can look up David Vanzuccelli. He's a very impressive, amazing artist. Uh, so those two. And then, of course, writers like Alan Moore. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows about Watchmen, the movie that just came out. Well, it was actually based on a comic book, which is very, probably the best comic, one of the best comics ever written. So you can go and read that if you want to. And of course there's V for Vendetta and um, there's a whole bunch. And of course Frank Miller. Everyone here has probably heard of the movie Sin City or 300. They started out as comic books. right? And uh, that's actually becoming more and more of a thing because I started talking to some people who wanted to make my book into a movie. And so that's becoming more and more a trend where uh, an idea starts out as a comic book because if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. What is a comic book? Well, it's sequential art, right? And what is a movie? It's basically the same thing. For every one second, there's 12 frames of action. So, anyway. And what was the other part? In terms of the Arab world, the oh. graphic novel. There are small but growing. It's not, there is a long history and legacy of art and cartooning in the Arab world. And, Naji Al Ali is the perfect example, but there's so many other ones. And it is growing, it's getting bigger. Uh, the problem is that in the Arab world in general, it's very difficult, I think, to publish anything. Um, 
uh, especially if it's going to challenge the status quo in some countries, and in other countries it's different. But I think there are a lot of Middle Eastern or Arab Americans who are, who are slowly uh, but surely adding their voices to, I mean, Persepolis is a perfect example. Persepolis is another graphic novel uh, that was written by an Iranian. Uh, she's actually French, Iranian French, I don't know how that works, but, and it's very good. And that was actually made into a movie, so that's another book that you can go out and get. But yeah, that's actually something that I want to do, is encourage more Arabs and non-Arabs to pursue this, because in my mind, it is, it's my, that art form, I think, that medium is so untapped. It has so much potential. I mean, just think about it, so much potential. And that's why, I mean, I already have three ideas for my next three books. I want to just, if I, I wish I had more than one person to work at the same time. And if there were other one, other Arab or artists like that, that would be always a good thing. All right, uh, I don't know how long do I have. So, okay, uh, go ahead. If you had another career choice, what would it be? I can't say that again. If you had another career choice, what would it be? Another career choice? I wouldn't choose anything else. Um, but if I had to, if I had to, it would be film, filmmaking, which is something that I'm interested in. And there's a connection there, so it's, it's pretty much the same thing. So. Go ahead. Being that the title of your, um, your book is A Rabbit America, was it hard to get it published and copied? <sighs> yeah, it was difficult because there was only one publisher who really was excited about it, and it was Last Gasp, that's the name of the company. And they have a long history from the 1960s. I don't know if anyone knows who Robert Crumb is. Robert Crumb is another very important and influential comic book artist. He's one of my favorites. But he was very controversial in the 60s and in the 70s. And so uh, yeah, Last Gasp was a studio that was founded by basically hippies. and. Uh, they were actually excited when I sent them my manuscript. They, they called me the same day they got it and said, we want this right now and we want you to finish it. And so it's true that it would be diff it is difficult to, depending on the content. But at the same time though, ever since 9-11 and even a little bit before that, more and more people are actually genuinely interested in the Middle East and Muslims and Arabs. And so there is an audience that's out there. So, any other? I think yeah, we got one or two more. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> did you have any uh, trouble with like publishing the book? Did you have to take out some stuff that you wanted to add, or did you have to add some things that you really didn't want to? That's the really good thing about Last Gasp. They let me do whatever I wanted. They never once told me to change anything. And if they did, I wouldn't have done it. So, and that's actually what I tried to do was push it as hard as I can. I actually, want, I kept waiting for that phone call or the email or something saying this page has to get taken out. You can't do that. You can't say that. So that's why I like Last Gasp. And that's why I'm actually going to stay with them for my next books. Because I could go to other publishers, but I won't. And I don't want to. Yeah. Uh, for like your, for your own identity, uh, let me see. Question: um, Like when you were in school, how you said from personal experience that uh, that you were ashamed or like sometimes ashamed of the Arab culture. Mm -hmm. uh, was it that like from the students that they were saying that you were an Arab and you were part of this culture, or that you were saying that you were, that you felt that you were part of the, their American culture and that you uh, you felt that you weren't part of the Arab culture, but since they sort of alienated you. That uh, did you was that because uh, you sort of went into the Arab culture because they gave you that they they had to give you that choice that you were an Arab that's why you not like right. that's a that's a very good question um, and that's a, that's a really really good question and it's one that requires you know me to actually sit down and think about it but I can tell you that it's hard to deal with counterfactuals you can't go back and say what if this or that. But what, you can, what I can tell you is this, that I was on track to being an ordinary American kid. I was ready to join the Marines. I, was re I wanted to. I'm still actually a little upset that I never got to know, you know, because I was gung-ho about that. And I was ready to become a patriotic, right-blooded, red, whatever it is, blooded American.